Well, the uh, chefs were uh, bowled over by today's sabotages. Uh, let's reveal everything that happened. Simon, welcome. Round one, spinach, artichoke dip. I didn't really taste artichoke in any of the dishes today. Well, there are some reasons for that. Let's dig into uh, what happened here. The winner of this horrible, miserable sabotage was able to swap out all three of their opponents' artichoke hearts for either a whole artichoke, Ooh. a bunch of raw artichoke leaves, or a bowl of dehydrated artichoke hearts. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to guess who got what? Chef Lewis got the artichoke leaves. Yes. Because he bloody put one on top of his dish. For the record, garnishes are not ornaments. They have a purpose. No. If you can't eat it, don't, don't put, put it on, it on plate. there. The whole artichoke, I'm going to say, went to Chef Jacqueline. No. Oh, curses. Chef Brittany. Okay. And Chef Jacqueline got the dehydrated ones. But in the end, you sent Chef Louise home. He gave me a crab dip with a little bit of spinach in it. If it had been a balance between the two, Chef Brittany did one with a little bit of shrimp in that, and that's fine, but it's still got to resemble what it's supposed to be. Well, hopefully Chef Louise has learned his lesson, because he's a good cook, yep. but he brought the wrong crustacean to the party. If I got run over by a bus, that's what I'd be, crustacean. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> Round two, stromboli. Of course, is basically a pizza rolled up. Rolled up pizza. And sealed. Stromboli is Italian. Mm -hmm. And so we built Mount Stromboli. Lee, Lee, Lee. Isn't Stromboli a Greek island as well? Yeah. I think there but is an island. I decided so to make an good. Italian uh, volcano. And I bet you can tell me exactly what happened here. Oh, this has got to be Chef Brittany. Indeed. So I hate to interrupt you. <laughs> Erupt. See, it's a. <laughs> It all goes together quite well, right? Well, it's a, it doesn't matter. I'm yes. interested in how you uh, plan on harnessing that heat into your stromboli. Everything is on the fly. Okay, fly fast because you don't have a whole lot of time left. All right. And you never know what's going to happen in Cutthroat Kitchen. One of the ways I cook naan bread, uh -huh. similar bread product, is you roll it out, you put it on a, a cooking rack, mm -hmm. and you hold it over an open flame, and it makes it puff I up. I do lavash that way. Yeah, so she could have at least done that and then made sure the dough was cooked. Yes. And then rolled it up. Absolutely, uh, but there's more. The mid round item made a very, very a big uh, difference in things. Uh, stand up for me, if you would. You're going to go stromboling. Uh. If you won the uh, stromboling, you gave it to someone, automatically giving them a 10 minute time freeze. But they could remove minutes from their time freeze with every pin they knock over. Oh, more skill than I've been given. Oh. So you would have had a nine minute hold. Who got stuck with it? Jennifer's it's got to be Chef Brittany. Because hers was all a complete mess. Yeah. And she didn't knock over any pens. So she had a full 10 minute sit out. Oh, and when she lesser. finally ran back in to finish cooking her stromboli, she had five, count them five minutes. Three, two, one, go. The plan right now is to get the stromboli rolled up and cooking. We had to deviate a little bit from the full idea, but we're not gonna deviate from the dish. What would you have done, Simon the Jundar? You know what? I'd have done something very, very small, small. and done an appetizer. I would have done a couple of small <laughs> ones on a big um, slotted spatula yeah. and just held it directly over the flame. Yeah. But, but in the end, she didn't do that, and she went home. Which uh, pushes us into round three, Belgian waffles. The uh, first item up for sale was the awful waffle basket. If you won this, <laughs> you could take away all of your opponent's ingredients and force them to use only the things on this tray. There's egg white powder, yep. honey powder, and I think also butter powder. Chef Jacqueline got this, but she just didn't conquer the powders. No. Yeah. But it could be done if you took the egg white powders, made an egg foam, or meringue essentially, to leaven the rest of the dough composed mostly of very, very finely milled crackers and a strawberry low-fat milk. Basically, what Alton's saying is you have to watch every episode of Good Eats, and then you would know how to do this. No, because we never <laughs> dealt with powder stuff. All right, next up, <laughs> Belgians may have created the Belgian waffle. They also created the saxophone. There was one by Chef Jacqueline. She gave it to Chef Brian, and he had to mix his batter inside a saxophone. His <laughs> Words you never thought you'd ever hear anybody say. It's not nearly as bad as you think. <laughs> what you have to do, though, is you've got to use some plastic wrap to wrap around to hold these keys uh -huh. down. Then I would have used just a very small whisk. But in the end, he actually messed with it so much, he overbeat the dough. It's yeah. Well, that's probably why they were chewy. And as for Chef Jacqueline, she made something that you thought tasted fine, but that just wasn't a lot. Actually, no, it wasn't. And in the end, you can say something tastes good, you can still win that way. But if it's so far removed and the other person is so close, right. they've got to win. So, Chef Brian walks out of here a winner. Please keep watching Cutthroat Kitchen on Food Network. And then afterward, come here to foodnetwork.com slash cutthroat and find out uh, all the wonderful things that the judge missed during the competition. Go download some recipes or something.